Oh, there we are now. Okay, we are here. We are welcoming <laughs> We're you to here. Still Full Living. I'm Dr. <laughs> Philip Mountrose, your host with Jane Mountrose. Hi, everybody. It's wonderful to be here. This show provides you timely tips, keys every week you can use right now to be more present, grounded in your life, more alive, soulfully. Our background is three decades of holistic coaching and healing experience as authors, trainers, publishers, founders of IAHP International Association of Holistic Practitioners and the Awakenings Institute, our nonprofit organization. Each week, we give you a show with a timely tip like this show, Daring to Be Yourself, Daring to Be Yourself. Hey, why not be yourself since you are yourself? Why hide? And we're going to show you ways and explore how to do that and uh, share this show with other people. And we'd appreciate that. And I think others would as well. Jane? Yeah, this is really, to me, a very, it's been an important topic. And it really is for anyone who wants to realize a higher purpose. It makes me think back to the time when Philip and I really he, he was a teacher and I was an, art, an architect and life just wasn't really working for either of us. I felt somewhere in, in my heart that my soul was dying. I didn't know what, at all what that meant. But I also remember at that time, as we, when we started seeking help, we, ha we met some really wonderful spiritual teachers who helped us considerably. And along with that, they, they required us to fill out a, an application kind of a form. It wasn't actually an application, but I guess an information form about ourselves. And I remember at one point on the form writing down that I couldn't really tell anybody in my office where I was working as an architect, mm -hmm. what I really felt about things, you know, what was really important to me, what was true to me. Mm -hmm. And that, that was more than 30 years, years ago now. And it still stands out how painful that was to be in that place. And so many of us are. Um, and so the idea of daring, it, it does require some daring to truly be yourself. And so that's why we thought it would be a wonderful topic for this show today. Mm -hmm. Right. And we want to cover a few key context points on daring to be yourself, which will bring out your greatness. Um, and it has to do often with what you're thinking about other people uh, because they tend to be uh, uh, something that can help you or hurt you, can lift you up or bring you down, as we'll explain. So context point number one is it's natural to want approval. Well, what do you mean, Philip? I mean, I don't care what other people think. Well, is that really true? Or I'm actually very concerned what the other people think. That's a spectrum there from saying, thinking you're above or beyond others to that you're very uh, focused and worried about others, codependent. So in either case, the facts are you are connected with other people. We are here with other people. We're in relationship with people all the time. And <clears throat> Part of that is a survival thing, of course. And if you kind of look at your history, when you were a child, <clears throat> you wanted to get approval of your parents, right? <clears throat> when you were a teenager, you wanted to get approval of your peer group. When you were a young adult, you wanted to get approval of uh, the community or fitting in somewhere, maybe starting a family. And then if you become a spiritual adult, if you bridge that midlife, whatever age, 30, 40, 50, midlife crisis transition, then you want to connect with the broader universe. You want to fit into the universe. You want to have a place in the cosmos and to make a difference and impact there. So in any case, it is natural to want approval. That's part of the process. Right. And I think looking back actually in that regard to when I was an architect, that was an indicator that I was in the wrong place <laughs> right? because I couldn't be myself in that place. And of course I wasn't happy in that place. So it just, it wasn't a good fit for me. And it also is important 
to understand that on, from a soulful perspective, ultimately it's not about getting being in a place where we have approval of other people necessarily. It's about getting to a place where we understand that we need to know in our hearts what's important to us and be pursuing that. And I think we can go into that a little bit more later. Mm -hmm. So the next part about daring to be yourself, which will bring out your greatness, context point is uh, how, how do you deal with what others are thinking of you? And what does that mean? What, what do you do about it, right? Well, would you rather have people say, I love you, I accept you, I like you, or you're a jerk, I reject you, I don't like you? Well, obviously, you want the former. You want people to like you. So that's natural. That's normal, right? However, sometimes they don't approve of you, like you. <laughs> so what do you do then? Well, that challenge that quote rejection is part of your journey right that's part of your individuation part of what we call a spiritual stage or activation where you break away from kind of group think your group into individualizing finding your path going deeper into your soul awareness to find out what you're here to do and uh, to experience and to explore so a lot of what you are concerned about what others think about you or imagine, because it might be imagining as we'll talk about what they think about you. Uh, you can wallow in the mud and worry about that or rise to the mountaintop, get that higher view of, uh, about where you're going and what you want to do. Right, right. And, and it also is, I think, if you're talking about rising to the mountaintop or rising to a higher place, um, that is a big part of it too. Uh, what what actually we discovered for or learned from the the spiritual teachers we worked with, and then we've obviously in the last thirty years gone a lot further with it, um, was that the truth is in your heart. It's in our hearts, in each of our hearts, and they taught us a wonderful process for connecting with the truth in our hearts, and we started doing that every day. And for me, it it started to change things <coughs> almost immediately because I, well, for one thing, just being unhappy with my work as an architect, I, I didn't want to get up in the morning. And then when I started doing this soul centering process, I couldn't wait to get up in the morning. And I'm still that way all this time. And part of what it did for me was allowed me to understand the truth of who I am in a deeper way so that I could express it better and learn when it's right to express it and when, it's, <laughs> when it doesn't make any sense. And there are times when it's really, it, it's not that meaningful to tell people everything <laughs> about how you, what you believe and what you feel. But we wanna be in a place where we are, we can do that. And we now, Philip and I are in a place where we are able to be ourselves. So it is really learning on a, from a soul perspective who you are and then what you're here for, what your purpose is, and then following that and allowing that to, <laughs> to bring uh, new, new opportunities and new people to you. We're in a completely different place now than we were 30 years ago. And the people around us are, are very different and supportive and we are free to express ourselves in, that, in there. <laughs> along with those people and like people in Enlightened World Network. Those are our kind of people, which mm -hmm. is why we have our show on Enlightened World Network. Um, so it, it is really important, I think, as a foundation to connect with the truth of who you are. And I had some more points about that I, I can mention in a while, too. I'll, I'll save those until Philip gets through his main, main points here. Yeah, it is, it is interesting to think that what we often want to do, what we're drawn to do, what we are soulfully uh, shown to do is often offset by what people tell us to do, what we're supposed to do, uh, what we're fearful about doing. So all those fears, those restrictions, many of them quite imaginary, as we're about to talk about here, um, is something to consider, you know, 
can I live a life I really want? No, I can't. Why can't you? Because so-and-so says I can't or no one has done this or people will criticize me. And that's what we're talking about. You know, you know, it's up to you. You're about as happy as you want to be, as Abraham Lincoln said, you know, as you choose to be. Right. Right. And, and it is it is perspective when actually Philip and I, from that time when we learned those, we started learning uh, how to connect with our own truth, which I think also just connecting with your intuition and being able to access a lot of different information about yourself and your life is really valuable. Um, but it led us on a journey into healing and our lives have been completely transformed. Now we, we direct an organization called Awakenings Institute, as many people probably listening to this know, um, where it's devoted really to creating a better world <laughs> where people, people's unique gifts are honored and nurtured. And, and yet there are still going to be people who aren't going to feel that that is meaningful. Right. Because for, for me, and as an example, when, when I shifted from being an architect into being a healer, <laughs> a life coach and healer, really, to begin, um, I was pretty much disowned by my family. And sometimes we have to go through things like that to realize our purpose and be strong enough. And that's why we, you, ha you can easily say, well, dare, you have to dare, <laughs> dare to be yourself. And and that was that was challenging for me, although I also understood that I had a reason for being alive. And if I give up on my reason for being alive, what do I have? That's why my soul was dying. I can't go back to that. <laughs> so we, it, it requires a lot of discernment and an inner strength. We need to know what the center of our being is, you know, what we're really about and value that. So the third point here regarding daring to be yourself and how to context what others, quote, think of you, one was it's natural to want approval, two is dealing with what others are thinking about us. And that can be, again, grist for the mill here about um, realizing your purpose and standing up for yourself. Um, so the third point here is be aware of negative imagination. So you might ask, what is negative imagination? Now, we often think of positive imagination, which is wonderful, creative, uh, manifesting, uh, imagining your future and such. On the other side, the darker side, is this <laughs> negative thinking projecting into errant uh, con conclusions as Mark Twain famously said, I've spent most of my life worrying about things that have never happened. And that's probably true of most of us. So this quote, mind reading, uh, what others are thinking of us uh, can really throw us off base. And that can help, that can lead us to dwelling on negative, uh, what we're imagining th people are thinking of us. And this is really a waste of time as Mark Twain observed. And on the other side, though, people, especially people who are watching this presentation, this podcast, Facebook Live, people are very empathic and are, are aware of others' vibrations. That is actually true. You are more or less aware of what others are putting out. So the question is, what does that mean? if they are putting out, quote, a negative vibration, is that are because they are judging you or because they have a stomach ache? Is that because, you know, they're rejecting you or is that because uh, they're worried about, you know, their family or a meeting coming up? You don't know, generally speaking. So be aware that you might be picking up negative vibrations and that may lead into a negative imagination, which is really uh, quite false and misleading and you want to put that in perspective. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I was earlier in life very distrustful of people and wary of people and afraid. Uh, in fact, it was interesting. I don't know. <laughs> I guess we all have different perspectives on what, what's going to happen when we grow up. But I kind of got the impression I was taught to be a good girl. 
And I got the impression that my sense of self when I was an adult was going to rely on whatever, what other people thought about me and what other people said about me. So I was always waiting for approval. Um, the soul is, it's a whole different reality <laughs> when you're looking at things from a soulful perspective, because the soul is looking for what you approve of. And then looking outside of yourself, it rather than being concerned about what others, how others might criticize you, it tends to focus more on how you can enrich the lives of others. And at a certain point, I realized I needed to reach out more to other people in a positive way. So going out in public, I started actually just saying hello to people, complimenting them, uh, in a line at the store, maybe carrying on a conversation, you know, a, a pleasant conversation. And it, I think it starts to create a, a different kind of a dynamic <laughs> where you're looking at the positive in others. And then you're also looking at the positive in yourself. I like the, the phrase from the Bible, judge not lest ye be judged. And I think that that is a, true externally and internally that we judge others as we judge ourselves. And when we look for the good in everyone, then we see the good in ourselves too. I, I think that that has been very helpful for me. And even people who are very different from me, I don't care when I say hello to someone, you know, whether they're spiritually oriented or anything. I just want to help help them to have a good day. And it, it really has changed things for me quite a bit. Uh, I grew up really in, a, in an alcoholic home, so it was a war zone. And I didn't learn how to communicate effectively. So learning just the basics of being able to be pleasant <laughs> and enjoy people, just really genuinely from the heart enjoy people. That was a real, um, a real help for me, I would say. Mm-hmm. The Bodhisattva is that Bodhisattva vow in Buddhism where enlightenment is connected with serving other people and helping other people. Mm -hmm. Kind of the ultimate life purpose where you're continually helping other people rather more and more selflessly. And um, so what others think of you isn't really the question you want to perhaps reframe that into how can I serve myself so I can serve other people? You know, and if someone has valid uh, criticism for you and it may come in a kind of a negative uh, tone, you can ignore the tone. But if someone has something uh, legitimate to say that could improve you, that that's something good, right? I mean, yeah. And if it's not, you can just reject it and move on and <laughs> maybe learn from that too. Right. Right. And I think this really comes, it, it becomes very important as it did for us when we start realizing there has to be a deeper purpose for life, which would mean I must have a deeper purpose. <laughs> so I must have a life purpose. And, and I think to be able to actually understand your life purpose, I think it, it really helps to connect with that truth in your heart and, and learn about what what your strengths really are what your weaknesses are you know what the great what your greatest joys are because your purpose is the thing that makes you feel most alive and joyful and excited about getting up every day it's not like oh i have uh, there there's another what is the other term for it like i have a a task a life task kind of like you're supposed to carry a ball and chain behind you and you know mm -hmm. suffer your way through it that's not it it's life. It's being fully alive and engaged and doing something that is that feels good in your heart that's meaningful for you and meaningful to the world on some mm -hmm. in some way. It doesn't have to be like <laughs> the big a big thing. It might be you you're a, a chef in a restaurant and and you just love to bring joy to people with good food. It it can be um whatever you're doing, that you're doing it in a soulful way. 
and it's the thing that you know is is your you know is the thing that is most meaningful to you mm -hmm. so that's something too for anybody if you if you haven't gone gotten to that place i think philip also has a he's going to share a link to uh our soul centering process and we have a a whole um a new book about about that um awakening to the power of the soul um which is very helpful it changed everything for us and many many people we've worked with over the years um and in that then you can connect with all of those things and what do you value most you know if you have you thought about that <laughs> it, it's interesting you know what what is really true for you not from a perspective that you want approval of other people but that you want approval of yourself it's it's a beautiful it's a beautiful journey and i'm sure people we have people listening to this show who are in all stages of this and some saying yeah that's i understand <laughs> and then maybe some people who are just getting started if you're just getting started it's worth pursuing in fact i think at a certain point it becomes essential it, there is Philip referred to that kind of that stage, you know, with kind of midlife crisis, which it's more than midlife crisis because it can <laughs> happen in, in a uh, in a much younger person too. It's but there's that dark night of the soul that people go through. It's a real thing mm -hmm. because we realize, well, this person who I believed myself to be, who I was taught I was, you know, this physical <laughs> person in a physical world that's not really who I am. I'm something, I'm someone else, but I don't know who. And we have to, we have to, for one thing, we have to <laughs> take off a lot of the disguises that we've put on to fit into society and the things that we've been programmed. And then we have to actually incorporate the truth into our beingness and, and into our lives. So there is that, there is that dark night of, now what? How am I going to get through this? Where do I go now? And it, it looks impossible because it it is you're entering a new reality, really. So it, but it's not. It is it's the most wonderful journey. I think the best thing ever, <laughs> in my opinion. Yeah, you step into your path, uh, and a lot of things come together synchronicities you start to notice things around you a little more that things are supportive and a lot of those fears melt away and what's left is your life and your aliveness and your journey forward and you don't know where it's going to go you start to trust more which is a big thing and that's part of daring to be yourself which seems mm -hmm. like almost a silly thing why would you dare have to you know be courageous just to be yourself because there's society as we talked about you know is about conformity is about you know approval as we talked about can limit us uh worrying about what others think of us which is part of the journey and that negative imagination which restricts us but as you start to see that you you you, you put that in perspective transcend that and go forward anyways feel the fear and do it anyways that's kind of the way it is hey and there is part of fear in the process which makes it more valuable and more meaningful and puts courage which is a soulful quality into the equation mm -hmm. right and it is really also energetically it is about bringing those fearful parts <laughs> of ourselves which are the parts that are disconnected from the truth truth of the soul, bringing them back into our wholeness so that we can embody who we are rather than embodying those fears, <laughs> which many people, they spend their whole lives being afraid and the, making most of their decisions based on fear rather than on the joy of being themselves and being able to make a positive contribution to the world. It's a choice from moment to moment and hopefully this show might encourage you and support you and share it with others to dare to be yourself you can connect with others without being attached or without being codependent uh, you can feel love you can send it out you can be instead of inbound 
bound up, you can be more outward thinking and looking and using your heart uh, to be more aware, to be your best to serve yourself and other people. And that's learning, growing, uh, rather than shrinking, obsessing, worrying. And uh, that leads you to daring to be yourself, the subject of this show on Soulful Living with Philip and Jane Mountrose as we're getting toward the last uh, round of this closing out. Right. Yeah, and it is the actually the stage where this becomes relevant. Also, some people experience it as feeling like they're somewhere between two worlds. <laughs> like one foot is in this physical world, and then another foot is in this other world, and there's this big kind of gulch in between. And we know that we want to be in that more expansive and beautiful world. Um, but we don't know how to get there. And mm -hmm. it, that's where the journey comes in. There is a bridge, by the way. <laughs> yes. And, and you it is actually it. in energetically in the body. It's in your heart. And you'll find it, you know, yeah. it will open up as you just go there. It's naturally there. How do you find it? You keep going forward from step to step, trusting, even though you don't know where you're going, but you're feeling it and kind of like a Helen Keller in the dark, you know, without sound or sight, she just, you know, felt her way into a trans transcendent life. Right. Right. Yeah. For us, we were at that place of not knowing <laughs> what to do and um, we needed a lot of healing. So we started, that's when we really started to explore healing in great depth. We did the, well, we still do. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, it just, so um, it's always very fascinating and there's always more to explore. Um, and when we did, we didn't know where we were going with it. We knew that we wanted, we knew what we wanted. We wanted freedom and we wanted to be able to create life on our own terms, but we didn't know how that was going to happen. <laughs> you know, you think about it, like Philip was saying, I don't know how this could possibly happen. Um, and it just is step by step following that joy, following the excitement and, and learning and growing and also clearing out that old stuff it's kind of like if you're remodeling you first have to clear out all the old stuff in a room right you can't just start putting all the new stuff in so there is it is a journey in that way but it, that is how you find yourself bow your heart be grounded go step by step i remember when i was doing one of my earliest projects many years ago a person was helping me said well you know Someone may be asking, you know, who died and made you God, <laughs> which is something that might strike you like, you know, why would anyone believe me in, in it's sort of an imposter syndrome, as it's sometimes called. And you feel the fear and do it anyway. You, you, you take your next step and realize that some people will criticize you. Um, and that's okay. <laughs> and that's how you learn and grow. Right. And you will have... Uh, that's grist for the mill, that's compost that'll help you grow and, and you will have negative imagination and worries and fears and you will pick up on negative vibrations, that's true. But you can still stand in your truth, go for your aliveness, connect with your soul. And we have a link for soul centering, something that we developed, uh, a, a tiny abbreviated uh, link here, which I put in the Facebook uh, page here, tinyurl.com slash soul dash center, tiny url.com slash soul dash center to help you on how to soul center. And we have a whole program, a new program on that, on awakening to your soul, the power of your soul. And there's a um, link there for there, a tiny url.com uh, slash power dash of dash your soul. Your dash soul? Power dash of dash your soul dash soul tinyurl.com okay, okay. Yeah, and that all goes by the way to our website which is actually getting through.org thru.org forward slash holistic actually one one of the main pages um we just use the tiny urls because our <laughs> they're usually pretty long the urls right so, but, but that's where they're going to getting through.org Home of Awakenings Institute. Yes. So anything else, Jane, before we conclude about daring to be yourself? No, I just, I guess, or, or I always say no, and then I say, <laughs> and then I have more to say. I, I feel pretty complete. I, I just, 
encourage everybody to take the next step wherever it is because uh, there's always more to explore and life is life is a beautiful journey Mm -hmm. as william wordsworth said a century ago we're trailing in clouds of glory do we come so let's amplify those clouds of glory so this has been soulful living show weekly here uh, with philip and jane montrose if you enjoyed the show please share it with others this week it was daring to be yourself which brings on your greatness your unique genius and if you want more to know more about us and what we have to offer which is quite a bit more uh go to our website getting through.org getting t-h-r-u dot o-r-g slash holistic with a lot of web a lot of downloads free downloads trainings uh, blogs videos and uh we do value your support and tuition for our courses and programs go to our mission of helping the world be a more creative loving place please share this with other people have a great week bye everybody yeah great being with you everyone until next time